what's going to happen. All right, uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers at this point. Um, this is Renee from uh, Anchorage. Um, I, I guess, you know, in y your experience, um, of course, this is all new to all of us, this um, new downturn in the economy, but how long do you think this is going to play out? The numbers are, the, the time frames are estimated very widely. When we're looking for somewhere within the next three to five months for the market to stabilize, mm -hmm. meaning that there will be enough consumer confidence restored, at least among uh, the potential collector, that you know, things aren't going to get much worse after three to five months. The total recovery, that's a, that's a bigger guess. We're thinking somewhere along the lines of 12 to 18 months to get back up to the level we were before all the subprime stuff hit the economy. But in this particular case, like you say, it is it, we're we're in a major shakedown right now, and it's it's looking like there's a lot of big players that have overextended themselves that are kind of falling by the wayside, and those of us who've been frugal and have kind of held on and um, still been entrepreneurial as far as investing some money back into our businesses but not going overboard. Um, should we survive, it looks like um, the potential for regaining should be relatively quick, do you think? I would think so. You have to recognize that as art dealers, our ultimate client, the collector, is typically between the ages of 35 and 55 and typically within the top 1 to 3 percent of income. What that means is these are not people who are in danger of losing their houses for the most part. Exactly. And they're not people who are going to be losing their jobs. Right now, what has created the slowdown in the art market is really more a crisis of confidence. Nobody knows what the news is going to show tomorrow, and nobody wants to spend discretionary income. Fortunately, American consumers, at least, are very impatient. And so once we see the sort of the bad news leveling off, then I think we'll hit a recovery pretty quickly within the art market. Now, if, you know, something unforeseen happens in six months, and I can't for the life of me think of what else could happen that hasn't already happened, that may change. But I think we're really looking at a crisis of confidence among our collectors rather than a financial crisis. Now, as far as, um, you know, you say the age group right now are your collectors, there are a lot of 20 and 30-somethings down there that um, are kind of coming to that trough as well. And I'm wondering, as far as marketing, do you foresee that changing considerably um, due to the, you know, the buying habits of the younger crowd being considerably different than the older crowd? You know, it, it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, we have always seen the, the 20 to 35-year-old segment of the market as the emerging segment of the market. In other words, typically within that range, there is not a great deal of discretionary income. You know, a lot of them at this point don't have permanent homes. A lot of them are still kind of trying to find their place in the world. You can't ignore them, but you shouldn't be counting upon that group in the short term. In the long term, they will move into that 35 to 55 range, and they will do so at a point where the economy, you know, has improved, hopefully. The concept of should we be marketing differently to bring in that emerging market is a very good one. It's something that I've seen in the 12 years that I've been in this business that this business is very often a little too stodgy, if you will. We tend to do what we've always done, and it's also, until very recently, it hasn't been a business that's been particularly technologically sophisticated. So, yes, there are ways to reach that emerging crowd. Other questions for Randy? Yes, this is Bill Dixon, Atlanta Art Gallery. I was wondering, do you have specific uh, numbers as far as to the galleries? You say that 20 to 30 percent of the uh, sales are down in luxury goods sales, but why, uh, 
the galleries would be selling everything you know, from a painting for a thousand dollars up to twenty thousand dollars or in higher. Is that some luxury sales? Are you talking about higher than twenty, or are you talking about five to ten? And and if so, how? What kind of an impact are you going to think that will have on the uh, as far as the uh, number of galleries still standing uh, in twelve months? Yeah, typically the luxury goods market includes the art market. And basically, you're, I mean, if you think of uh, in terms of, say, fine jewelry, pretty much the same kind of price range as fine art. So I don't have any specific numbers about the art market segment of the luxury goods market, but I think the numbers are pretty consistent. What we've heard, and that's just anecdotal evidence, but what we've heard from client galleries and from our associates in the business is it's pretty much in that 20 to 30 percent range overall. And yes, there are going to be galleries that will go out of business because of this challenging time. And to a certain extent, that will actually speed the recovery as the number of suppliers decreases. The number of collectors in the market really isn't going to change that much. It's really just a matter of whether they have the confidence to, to buy at this point in time. Other questions? Yes, I am an artist who also has my own gallery, and um, I'm wondering if the guest has any specific comments on that as to advantages or disadvantages. Um, I work with my wife, who does most of my marketing, and um, obviously it's a small operation. I paint full time. I was wondering if you had any comments on that situation. Well, to a certain extent, you're actually in a fairly good position as a gallery. And that's because in doing it all yourself, you have a very low overhead. And that's what's really hurting galleries at this point. The idea that you know a certain portion of a gallery's expense are variable and a certain portion are fixed. Your cost of goods and your cost of sales, your commissions, that's always going to be a variable cost depending on how much artwork you sell. Your overhead, your rent, your salaries, your utilities, debt service if you have debt, those are fixed expenses. Whether you sell zero dollars or a million dollars in a month, those fixed expenses don't change. So, you know, as a gallery, you're actually, you're actually probably in a better shape than, than most of the galleries because you're doing everything yourself. And it sounds from what you're saying that you don't have uh, sales staff on the floor and so forth. As an artist, well, you know, it's like you, you, you're sure you've got one outlet for it. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Yeah. Um, but you have to make sure that the fact that you sell your own artwork isn't discouraging others from selling it also. And that, I think, is probably where you ought to be focusing in the short term. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand that last comment about other artists. What, could you explain that, please? I may have misspoken. My point was that since you are an artist and you sell your own work retail in a gallery setting, yes. there are other galleries that may be reluctant to carry your work as well. And the reason for that is twofold. One, if you're the named artist and it's your gallery, you're going to have a tendency, at least in the minds of these other galleries, to put the best work in your own space, which perhaps leaves them with something other than the best work. And they're also going to be concerned about the fact that you have a greater ability to discount your own artwork than they do. Yes, I don't do that. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I congratulate you on that. Yes. But in addition to not doing that, you also have to make sure that other galleries that are carrying your work understand that you don't do that and believe that you don't do that and have confidence that you're treating your personal gallery as an equal to all the other galleries that you're selling artwork to. Yes, I agree with that. Thank you. This concludes the ABM webinar. We hope that the information provided has given you the tools and confidence to stay calm and stay strong in 2009. On behalf of our business news, I'd like to thank our speakers, Raphael and Randy, for their time and expertise. Thanks also to our readers for their continued support of the magazine. I wish you the best in 2009. Thanks, and have a great day.